Welcome to this short demonstration about the recently released ACI World Static Capacity Tool powered by Redwater Consulting Group. My name is Billy Shallow, the Director for Innovation and Technology here at ACI World. Let's meet the developer of the tool, Anthony Ciccatini, the Managing Director of Redwater Consulting Group. Anthony, good morning. Good morning, Billy. Thanks for having me. So what are the main objectives of the tool? Well, the objective of the tool was to provide airports with a simple way they could evaluate uh, planning and operational scenarios uh, across their facilities as, as traffic recovers. The overall check-in module allows the users to analyze the processing capacity of check-in, self-service, and bag drop facilities. Passengers using online check-in that have no need to print boarding passes and or drop off baggage are assumed to bypass the check-in facilities. The user should note but depending on the configuration of the airport, a passenger may utilize more than one processing element. For example, when we input our data here, we will have to account for some possible double counting between those using the self-service kiosk and the bag drop counter. Let's get into the uh, how the user inputs the data. The module has been designed to have five scenarios that the user can use to assess different operational parameters or different facilities uh, according to their uh, terminal layout. So for example, if there are five different check-in islands that the user wants to assess, called A, B, C, D, and E, they're able to do that quite easily. Now, if we go change the names back to just being scenarios, this could be all for check-in island A, but then there might be different processing speeds that the user would like to, to assess. The user then puts in the input time that they would like to analyze. They have the option of four hours, two hours, one hour, 30 minutes, or 15 minutes. Let's choose one hour in this case. And then how many passengers will use check-in counters? Let's say a thousand. How many passengers will use self-service kiosks? In this case, 500. And then bag drop counters, let's say 750. You can see over here that the model outputs are already starting to start to calculate some of the outputs based on the inputs there. The user then puts in the average processing time, let's say 45 seconds in this case per passenger, and how many check-in counters are available. Let's say there's only uh, nine available. Now these are the space requirements, and we've preloaded some of the uh, some of this data already just to fit within the optimum values, but the user can put whatever value they want in here. In fact, we even put a little uh, note there that they can reference uh, just by hovering over that cell, just to give them some guidance if they're not sure. So in this case, let's go with 1.5 square meters per passenger and a maximum acceptable queue time of 15 minutes. And what is a queuing area available? This is uh, for an airport that already has a check-in counter um, layout available. And we can sit there and say, well, we think there's we measured it and there's 400 square meters for scenario one. Now, if we look at our output screen over here, we can see that the values are already populated. This, the model output's also been designed in a push versus pull um, approach. It can answer the questions of, I have check-in facilities, what can they do? Or I have demand, what do I need? So you can look at the outputs and see how that works. So passenger demand at check-in is 1,000 that we know. The capacity of the check-in counters is 900, given that we only have nine in the processing time. So we're 100 short in this, in this case. There's going to be 280 passengers in the queue maximum. And then the maximum queue area required is 420. The calculated queue time, max queue time, is 23.3 minutes, which is eight minutes higher than our target of 15. And the model is telling us that we need 10 counters and we need, uh, we actually need, um, we're actually short by one because we only have nine. So say we align that to 10, you can see that everything goes down to perfectly aligned. We have our 10 counters, we, we can satisfy capacity. Uh, we only need 300 square meters for a queuing area. Uh, and that is 100 more than we have currently available. And there's the, the maximum, uh, sorry, the max queue time calculated is 15 minutes, which is zero difference to our MQT target. You can see, although we haven't filled all the data in, you can see that that, 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 that checking counter um, and the visualization difference is going down to zero as well. Security is another one, very simple layout, but security can be a bit complicated in terms of having decentralized security or transfer security. My answer to that would be use the scenarios to your advantage. 
So this could be security checkpoint A, security checkpoint B, security checkpoint C, D, and then this could be transfers. We can, we can look across the entire security network and input this, the, the same variables and get an analysis across each of those inputs there as well. So if we know that checkpoint A will have higher demand uh, in an hour than, than B, we can see what those, those impacts are. Alternatively, if you just want to evaluate A, we can do that as well and then just play with the, the hourly throughput for each of those if that's one of the variables that you're assessing or if you're assessing the, the space requirements as well. Perfect. Thanks, Anthony. So that concludes the demonstration. For more information, please go to the ACI website and the tool is available to download directly from our store. For further information, please contact airport IT at aci.aero. Thanks for watching.